So hopefully you've got a nice fresh pot of coffee handy, maybe an apple juice or a nice really fresh glass of water to get you through the next 40 to 45 minutes as we discover this amazing destination and a place that the team at Asia Answers thinks is one of the most underestimated destinations in Asia. Personally, it's one of my favourites, and, and I may be a little bit biased due to the fact that my wife's family comes from the Philippines, but I can tell you it is absolutely majestic, it's marvellous, and it's a place, if you or your clients are looking at travelling to, you will not be disappointed. It's a place that's going to blow you away, and over the next 40 to 45 minutes, we're going to show you what this country is all about. Well, the Philippines themselves has more than 7,000 islands, ranging from the sophisticated and developed to the proverbial deserted. There's only about two and a half thousand islands that are inhabited. And over all of these islands, as we said, 7,000 in total, there's around about 100 million people. Of course, the Philippines is a land apart from the mainland of Southeast Asia, not only geographically, but also spiritually and culturally. The country's overwhelming Catholicism, the result of 350 years of Spanish rule, is its most obvious enigma. Many Spanish eras have included festivals and there's also been unique Spanish Filipino colonial architecture displayed throughout the whole of the country. There's areas where you can see century old stone churches, malls, fast food chains and widespread spoken English reveal the influence of Spain, the colonial successor and also the Americas. Of course, as we go through our different destinations with Asia Answers, we love to share with you a number of different fun facts just to kickstart the presentation and show you these marvellous countries. Well, today, here's some interesting insight into the Philippines. The Philippines is the world's leading producer of coconuts. It's also one of the top, has one of the top 10 largest shopping malls in the world. In fact, three are actually found in the Philippines. So they love shopping in the Philippines. We've got the SM Mega Mall, we have the SM North Edsa, and then we also have the SM Mall of Asia, which you can see here. So three out of the 10 biggest shopping malls in the world exist in the Philippines. So straight away, you know there's gonna be good shopping. It also has the world's largest shoes. Not even a model would dare take the runway in 16 inch heels. Measuring over 17 feet long and eight feet wide, these giant dress shoes could fit 30 normal feet inside them. Now built in Marikina, the capital of shoe production in the Philippines and the house of Imelda Marcos' shoe collection, the massive footwear was certified by the Guinness World Book, Book of Records in 2002. The creation took a whopping 77 days to finish and cost over 2 million Filipino pesos. But as you can see, an absolutely majestic sight. This was something that absolutely blew my mind and I find it's amazing, but even, you know, it's a great insight into the people. Just by looking at the Philippine flag, it tells you a message. The positioning of the Philippine flag colours indicate a message. If it is flown with the red stripe on top, the nation is in, nation is in a state of war. Otherwise, during peacetime, the blue is on top. Just a great way to be able to show the people what's going on. The rice terraces of the Philippine area are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The terraces were built around about 2,000 years ago, and thanks to the rough terrain keeping settlers out, remain as they would have been in pre-colonial times as well. I'm sure we've all seen one of these, you know, on Google or on Facebook, or just on people's travelling pictures. Yep, after the Second World War, the Philippine Jeepney was born out of the GI Jeep American soldiers brought to the country in the 1940s. Yes, a common way to get around in the Philippines by jeepney that usually seats many more people than it's licensed for. It is often wildly painted and decorated and transcends public transportation to become fellowship and hilarity on wheels. In the Philippines, jeepneys are as ambiguous as tuk-tuks in India and also throughout Indochina. Of course, we always suggest don't take a taxi, take the locals' way, jump on a jeepney and make 17 new friends on the journey. Filipinos are the warmest and the most welcoming of all Asian countries. And I'm sure you would have experienced this firsthand, being traveling that on shipping uh, ships around the world or cruises around the world. You always see a lot of the staff are Filipino because of their gentle nature and their absolutely wonders that they have with children and also people throughout the whole of the family. 
Now, this is quite interesting. The amount of sulfur dioxide expelled by Mount Pinatubo during its eruption on June 15, 1991, created a two-year haze. Yes, that's correct, two years. So around about 700 days, which was caused all around the world to cause the temperatures to drop by about 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. It may not seem like a lot, but when you think the whole world, that's pretty amazing. In the province of Kemagung Island, there are more volcanoes, seven in fact, than towns where there are only five. There hasn't been an eruption since the mid-1950s, but the island has the most number of volcanoes per square mile anywhere in the world. The only place in the world as well where, where skunks are found are in the Americas and Indonesia, and of course the Philippines, where they are called stink badgers. Look at the little guy right here. Always better to see a photo of these guys. We now move on to the geography of the Philippines. The Philippines is an archipelago that consists of 7,641 islands. The archipelago is around 500 miles from the Asian mainland and is located between Taiwan and Borneo. The Philippines has a total land mass of 116,500 square, 518 square miles with the 11 largest islands containing 95% of the total landmass. Many of the islands are smaller than one square mile. Now the islands of the Philippines are divided into three main groups. The Luzon Island group comprising Luzon Island, where Manila is, Palawan and Mindoro. You also then have the Vis Visas Yaran Island group, including Cebu and Bohol, located in central the Philippines, which you can see right here now in the light green. And then Mindano Island Group, which is down there in the south. This is a beautiful part of the country, but that's one thing about the Philippines. It doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be blown away by the natural beauty. Now, there are many volcanoes in the country, and many are active. The most recent eruption being that of Mount Pinatubo on Luzon in 1991. The most famous volcano is Tar Volcano in Talisay which is one of the world's 17 decade volcanoes. Now that means volcanoes that need to be monitored giving their active state an explosive history. It's also located in a lake and has a lake inside it with an even smaller lake island inside it. Now if you don't understand what I just said, have a look at that picture on your screen. As you can see, volcano inside a volcano inside a lake. The history of the Philippines. Early inhabitants of the Philippines were hunter-gatherers, later farmers who grew rice and domesticated animals. From about the 10th century, trade with China developed, and in the 12th century, Arab merchants brought Islam to the islands. Now, in 1521, Ferdinand Magellan landed in the Philippines and claimed the islands for Spain. Magellan installed a local puppet ruler, hoping that he would rule by proxy. But chiefs refused this arrangement and an uprising led to Magellan's death. Now the Spaniards made a successful attempt to colonise the Philippines in 1571. They built a city called what we now refer to as Manila and named the archipelago after King Philip II. Now a feudal system was created and Filipinos became the estate workers for the Spaniards as well as being forced to convert to, to Catholicism. Peace and prosperity continued until 1762 when the British briefly captured Manila, handing it back under the terms of the Treaty of Paris in 1763. Nationalist feeling grew, ignited by an author, José Rizal. His execution turned rebellion into revolution. Now, in 1898, the US and Spain went to war, and Spain ceded the Philippines to the Americans. The Filipinos had other ideas, so began their brief Filipino-American war which the US won. Just after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Japanese troops invaded the Philippines. Now the US recaptured Manila in 1945 and made the Philippines independent in 1946. So around about 70 odd years ago. We often get asked the best ways, best ways to get to any of our destinations in Asia. Well, I can tell you, we have a number of different preferred carriers. 
those being Cafe Pacific, which fly, flies via Hong Kong. So a perfect little place to stop over in Hong Kong, especially for those who love shopping, or maybe if they want to stop and see some horse racing, or maybe even if it's the right time of year, stop in Hong Kong and see some Rugby Seven. But Cafe Pacific is one way to get you to any place throughout Asia. Alternatively, we also have Eva Air. And this is an airline that I flew with just recently, and it was an absolute joy to travel down to Thailand and also to Taiwan. Obviously, Taiwan, Taipei being the hub of Eva Air. And you may even be fortunate enough to be follow, flying on one of their Hello Kitty planes that you can see right there. Yet again, a great way to introduce yourself into Asia is having a couple of days in Taipei and exploring Taiwan. Relatively small area, but an area that you can get around in two or three days and just another little country that you can tick off and have a look at, but also a great standalone destination as well. We may have some exciting news coming up in the next couple of weeks about either air and maybe a familiar down to the uh, Asia area. So keep that, keep your ears to the ground. I'll bring you up to date. Of course, when you're travelling throughout Asia and any areas in the tropics, you always need to know the best time to travel there. You want to make sure that your clients are going to be experiencing what they hope to experience, and a lot of the time that can be determined by the climate. The coolest months to travel are November through to February, and I find that my, uh, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, they normally return to the Philippines once year, each year, and they normally go back in February. With March to May being a dry but hot, June through to October is a rainy period and subject to monsoons. So obviously would be referred to as the low season. Some islands like Cebu though are comfortable all year round. Of course, once you know what months you want to go there, you then got to realise what you need to be able to get into the country. Let's, let me tell you, there are no shots or medications required to enter the Philippines from the US. Now US citizens with a passport of at least six months are granted a 21 day entry permit on arrival at no cost. So yet again, another great country in Asia that is very easy to get to from the United States, but then at the same time, a country with very, very little regulation in regards to visas and also uh, vaccines. As we mentioned earlier, the jeepneys and getting around the Philippines. In addition to riding the, the jeepneys in Manila, there's also a number of different ways to get around. You might want to fly between the islands because as we mentioned, there's a number of different islands and Philippine Air and various other little local carriers can get you from point A to point B, no problems whatsoever. Of course, ferries are also an option for those who are on a very leisurely pace. And most people you meet speak English, so finding your way is not a problem. Of course, the Philippines is great value for money. Hands down, the Philippines offers the best value for money, I believe, in Asia. A vacation at one of the world's top beaches in an over-the-water bungalow, which you can see here, very, very affordable, especially when people are looking at alternatives. Maybe they had their heart set on a honeymoon in somewhere such as Tahiti, but the price was too high. The Philippines is going to be able to give you that feeling, but at a very much reduced cost. And let's not forget about dining on tropical fruits and seafood and having your meals cooked up right there in front of you at such places as the Sojourn at Diamond Hotel. And for those who like to relax, the Philippines is the place to go. Maybe get a massage every single day. Of course, let's not forget about the outdoor activities. There's swimming, there's paragliding, there's quad biking, there's snorkeling, there's surfing. Everything you could possibly need to make it a vacation of a lifetime. We now move on to religion in the Philippines. And as we've travelled throughout Asia, we've seen various religions in different parts of the continent. However, here in the Philippines, the Philippines proudly boasts to be the only Christian nation in Asia. More than 86% of the population is Roman Catholic. 6% belong to various other nationalised uh, Christian uh, areas. And then there's also 2% who belong uh, to around about 100 different Protestant uh, denominations. But as you can understand, majority of the people, 86% in total, Roman Catholics in the Philippines. Of course, language in the Philippines. Tagalog is the official language of the Philippines and there are over 100 dialects in the Philippines. English is widely spoken. In fact, according to a census, 55 million people in the Philippines speak English, 
making it the fifth largest English-speaking nation behind the US, India, Pakistan and the UK. Now, since English is widely spoken in the Philippines, it is common to hear Filipinos using a mixture of English and also uh, Tagalog. And this will often be referred to as Taglish in their everyday conversation. Interestingly, a steadily dwindling minority still speaks Spanish, which had one time been an official language. But I can tell you, travelling around the Philippines will not be a problem at all because everyone will be very welcoming and everybody will be able to communicate with you to be able to point you in the right direction. Now, one thing that I absolutely adore about the Philippines and something being now married into a Filipino family is the cuisine. And I've actually even started to learn to cook some Filipino meals. So next time I see you out there on the road or at a trade show, come and say hello and I'll give you my secret recipe to this famous dish, adobo, which you can see here. Now, no list of Filipino food would be complete without adobo, a dish in every household in the Philippines. It's, a, it's Mexican, Mexican in origin, but Filipinos found that cooking meat such as chicken and pork in vinegar, salt, garlic, pepper, soy sauce, and other spices was a practical way to preserve it without refrigeration. This cooking style can be applied to different meats or even seafood. Now, I can tell you personally, folks, even my mother-in-law and my father-in-law tell me that I cook a pretty mean adobo, and that's pretty good considering they came from the Philippines. So drop by, I'll tell you all about this amazing dish. This is a dish that everybody loves. It doesn't matter if you're, you're two all the way up until 82. It's something that's very rewarding. Something a little bit different is the lechon. The lechon is the most, in, most you know, intrinsic and you know, fascinating of dishes. The entire pig is spit roasted over coal with the crisp golden brown skin served with liver sauce, the most coveted part. Now in Cebu, the stomach of the pig is stuffed with star anise, pepper, spring onion, laurel leaves and lemongrass, resulting in an extremely tasty uh, dish which needs no sauce. Sitting. Nothing goes to waste in the Philippines. This is very important to remember. In the culinary capital of Pampanga, they turn the pork's cheeks, head and liver into a sizzling dish. The crunchy and chewy texture of this appetizer is a perfect match for a nice cold beer. Served with hot sauce and seasoning. And something that I'm sure we'll all adore is crispy pata, a pork knuckle that is simmered, drained and deep fried until crisp. The meat is tender and juicy, inside with a crisp crackling exterior, served with vinegar, soy sauce and chili. Now, I think arguably one of the most favourites of Filipinos and also people of Western origin is lumpia. Now, I can tell you, I just had my son's fourth birthday, and last year on his third birthday, we did a whole big Filipino spread. And this year, we were a little bit more traditional, I guess, in uh, our Western, where we did barbecue and hamburgers and sausages. But all of my friends, all of my locals where I live now, came and said to me, where are those little rolls? Where are those little, uh, you know, spring rolls, inverted commas, they referred to them as, that we had last year with some... Uh, sweet chilli sauce and also some sour cream. I said, oh, we didn't make any this year. But they were de de uh, disappointed. I can tell you what, these are absolutely second to none, one of the best dishes from the Philippines. Lumpia, also known as the Philippine egg roll. These meat-laden, deep-fried egg rolls are filled with ground pork or beef, minced onion, carrots and spices with the mixture held together by a beaten egg. They may sometimes contain green peas, cilantro and raisins as well. But I can tell you what, Everybody loves these little guys. We now move on to the etiquette in the Philippines. Initial greetings are formal and follow a set protocol of greeting the eldest or most important person first. A handshake with a welcoming smile is the standard greeting. While dining, a fork and spoon are the typical eating utensils. Hold the fork in the left hand and use it to guide food to the spoon in your right hand. Now, this is very important. If conflict was to develop, it is important not to cause shame. Filipinos have a highly developed sense of shame and try hard to conform and live up to society's norms or behaviours. If someone is publicly embarrassed, criticised or does not live up to expectations, they feel shame and lose self-esteem. It's best to address problems quietly, discreetly and patiently. Now, this is also 
amusing, but at the same time, you need to make sure you, you, you listen to. Don't take yes for an answer. The reason I say this is Filipinos have a hard time of saying no. Disagreeing or admitting that they don't know will often say that they will often say yes to keep relations positive. So a country that's always trying to help you out. And don't be offended by personal questions. Filipinos are open with each other and expect visitors to be similarly open. And of course, don't get impatient. The concept of timeliness is more relaxed in the Philippines than we see here in the West. Now, there's a number of different places to visit in the Philippines. Obviously, we have so many islands and destinations. We're just going to show you a couple of those right now. Of course, Manila, the capital of the Philippines, sets the beat for the rest of the country. A bustling crossroads of east and west, and at the middle of the intersection, which features the Manila Cathedral, Fort Santiago, and San Agustin Church. Greater Manila consists of 11 cities and five towns. There is the upmarket area with the most desirable businesses and residential addresses, hip hotels, restaurants, clubs, and boutiques are mostly found in Avial and also Autogas. Now, another area outside of the city is designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which you can see here. These stone and mud rice terraces delicately trace the con contours of what's known as the Cordillera Mountains in northern Luzon and have been central to the survival of the, the people since pre-colonial Philippines. This living landscape with its intrinsic web of irrigation systems, harvesting water from the mist elevated mountaintops, reflects a clear mastery in structural techniques and hydraulic engineering that have remained virtually unchanged for over two millennia. As you can see, all the way up the mountain range, you know, almost like steps. The art of maintaining the terraces was passed orally from generation to generation with traditional, with traditional tribal rituals evoking spirits to protect the, the, the rice fields. To this day, rice deities are venerated and placed in the fields and also in order to bring abundant harvests and protect against spirits and also catastrophe. We then have Bagul, Luzon Island, the city of pines. The misty mountains of this area and the city's cooler temperatures are what distinguish it from other destinations in the Philippines. Bagul has long been a cool weather highland haven for those travelling in summer. The people of this area are welcoming of tourists and proud to share their culture with visitors. Adding a few nights in this area to a Manila trip is absolutely a must and gives a sense of rounding out your experience in the Philippines. Vagan, also on Luzon Island, is also a great destination for the ultimate throwback adventure in the Philippines, the country's only UNESCO World Heritage City, a delight for cultural vultures and history junkers, junkies. Vagan is a unique and historic destination that will give you a wonderful glimpse of the intriguing and colonial past and culture of the country. From Spanish-styled houses to a 17th century Augustine Cathedral, Vagan has an old world charm to give your fix for history and culture. We then go across to the beautiful island of Cebu and has long been the epitome of a tropical island paradise. Near perfect climate, pristine beaches and luxury resorts, and of course spas as well, are all part of this beautiful part of the country. And let's not forget about Cebu mangoes, which are absolutely legendary. Sweet and juicy, when Ferdinand Magellan claimed the Philippines for Spain in 1521, it's possible he had a retirement spent lying on the beach eating mangoes in mine. Just look at the colour in these mangoes. Camotes Island of Cebu Island. Now, want to get true taste of the laid-back island life in the Philippines? This is where you head to. A couple of hours east of the city of Cebu, just bring some extra cash since there are no ATMs on these places to visit in the Philippines. And that's what I absolutely adore about the Philippines. You can get off the beaten track, but at the same time, you can get back to modern society and to civilization very quickly. But if you do want to get off the radar, we can find you that place in the Philippines. The whole island is home to the deliciously named Chocolate Hills, centuries old churches, and of course, white sand beaches, as well as the Tarzi, one of the world's smallest monkeys. 
Other exotic wild and plant life can be found in this province as well. Behold verdant rolling hills which turn chocolate brown in the dry season. Crystal clear springs and beaches and historical homes and churches attract travellers all year round. There is also a magical natural phenomenon known as the sea of clouds in Bohol, which takes place almost every single day. Of course, a place that's growing in popularity and that is known around the world now is Boracay Island, a mecca for sun worshippers. Boracay is decorated with powder white sand beaches, small villages, flowering plants and tropical jungles. Below sea level, an underwater wonderland awaits snorkelers and divers. Of course, for those who just want to lay on the beach, can you get any better setting than this? And let's not forget, Boracay is considered the best beach in the Philippines and lures travel junkies from all corners of the earth. Furthermore, it has a world-class nightlife scene as well. There's always something going on. El Nido, Palawan Island. Now, Palawan is the Philippines' last frontier and most sparsely populated region consisting of over 1,700 islands. It is the best de diving destination in the archipelago. Also a natural history lover's haven. Wildlife, marine life and flora thrive in this area, which resembles a garden of Eden. For those on a romantic vacation or honeymoon, we recommend an overwater bungalow in El Nido, a magnificent destination offering great beaches and ideally lagoon snorkeling. Blessed with a wealth of pocket caves and eye-catching beaches, El Nido is Mother Nature's way of showing off her grand, grand old, old supreme beauty. beauty. With its stunning inlet, clear, clear waters, water, vibrant, vibrant beaches, beaches El, Nido El Nido indeed has, has one, one of the most beautiful, beautiful seascapes, seascapes anywhere, anywhere in the world. In the world. Of course, El Nido, El Nido is also admired for its verdant jungle and steep limestone cliffs which magnificently form a, a cast backdrop, backdrop that is similar to those found in Gillen, Krabi and Heilong Bay. Bay. So, so I can tell you what, you need, you need to get the Philippines on your to-do to list. list. Now, now, we now, now head across, across to Coron on the Palawan Island, Island often, often revered as one of the most beautiful places to visit, to visit in, in the Philippines. Philippines. It truly is a spectacular tropical paradise that will wow you in a lot of different ways. Pray for, pray for its postcard perfect scenery. The Philippine destination delights its visitors with its crystal waters, pristine white sand beaches, towering limestone cliffs and picturesque remote islands as well. And let's not forget, Coron has decent and colourful coral and has a host of underwater wrecks, making it one of the best places to visit in the Philippines for diving. We now head across to... Mindanao, which is a teardrop-shaped island 500, 500 miles southeast of Manila. It was originally known as the surfing capital of the Philippines with an international reputation among surfers. And I can tell you I have many surfing buddies from back in Australia and they have been telling me the place to go surfing is up here in the Philippines. They said it's one of those places nobody knew about. People are starting to learn about it though because it has some of the best waves anywhere in the world. Now it is visited by a broader range of travellers who come from the coral reef, rock pool and offshore islands with unusual rock formations, wildlife and mangrove forests as well. Sagaro is naturally beautiful and development is low key. Of course, those that are looking for special interest options in the Philippines, well there are so many to take into consideration. Scuba diving. The Philippines is a diver's mecca. In previous webinars, we have spoken about the Coral Triangle, the global center of marine biodiversity, spanning Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Timor, and also the Solomon Islands. Within this nursery of the sea, there's 76 of the world's coral species, so you're going to be blown away for what you see down there. Six of the, the world's seven marine turtle species as well. And let's, and let's not forget, not forget at least 2,228 2, reef fish species as well. Of course, the diving in the Philippines is diverse and attracts divers with a wide range of interests. Overall, divers can expect good visibility in warm water temperatures. Now, the dive season is best from November to May. June to October is the rain season and also noted for typhoons. The team at Asia Answers is able to advise on which areas to which dive preferences, from large areas to exotic corals to wrecks. It's all here. 
and we can and we definitely, definitely put you in the right destination for you and your client. Snorkeling with whale sharks. For those, those who want to get up close and personal with these majestic and peaceful giants, the whale shark snorkel interaction is highly recommended. Trekking as well, the Philippines offers amazing trekking experiences, including volcano treks, rice terrace treks and mountain hikes. And here are just some of our favourites. Both day and night over overnight hikes up Mount Mayon, the most symmetrical volcano in the world, are possible. One of the most breathtaking hiking trails in the Philippines can be discovered as well in Banu, high up in the hinterland. Tucked into these mountains are grand rice terraces, gorgeous waterfalls, lush forests and an ancient culture still steeped in tradition. Of course, yeah, it's a, a place for nature lovers and bird watchers alike. There's something here for everybody. There's a haven that you will absolutely adore and be asking for more. Numerous species of birds, bats and butterflies can be seen here. Also there are the Tazir, as we mentioned earlier, one of the smallest primates and also monkeys in the world. As you can see, they are, wildlife is astounding in the Philippines. Now, now, something you may want to try is spelunking, with tons of caves mapped to explore on Samar Island. It's no wonder extreme outdoor adventure junkies are calling Samar Asia cave and capital. Langun Gombingong Cave, the country's largest caving system, is found in Kalbiga. This cave system is so huge that it can easily fit a trio of soccer fields. Of course, tribal culture. For those who are interested in tribal culture, a visit to the remote Batak tribe in the northern part of Palawan will be a memory for life. To get to the village, a hike through jungle and across rivers is required. But on arrival, visitors will be held with the, will be met and get the opportunity to meet the oldest indigenous tribe in the Philippines. Where you may see women playing their local instruments, or you may just see members taking their time to go out and try to catch some fish for the day. Researchers believe the Batak arrived in the Philippines about 50,000 years ago and were the first humans to cross the land bridge from mainland Asia to the archipelago. Now their population is a few hundred and there are many threats to their existence. We now look at some of the best beaches, Boracay. Boracay makes just about every list of top beaches in the world that Google and every other search engine has to offer. Who doesn't love powdery white sand, calm waters, turquoise waters and a price fraction of what they would be as an international resort elsewhere. Value for money in the Philippines. I'm now going to run you quickly through our perfect week in Philippines. We will be sending out this uh, overview, this flyer that we hope that you will distribute to your client database. Get them thinking about the Philippines. Maybe it's a destination they've never considered before, but it'll get on their radar, A, because of its natural beauty, B, because it's very price attainable, and C, because I can guarantee you, once they go there, they'll be raving about it for years and years to come. Well, on day one, on arrival in Manila, you'll be met and transferred to your accommodation. So, no problems, very simple, and away we go. Day two, though, is just an introduction into this thriving city, which is Manila. In the morning, take a half-day city tour of Old Manila. The tour starts with a drive through Roxas Boulevard to Rizal Park, named in honour of the country's national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. After a brief picture stop, proceed to the walled city to visit the remnants of Spain's conquistadors, and then travel through the cobbled streets to San Agustin Church, the country's oldest stone church, and view its wide collection of icons, vestments, and other religious artic articles and artefacts as well. Across town, it is Casa Manila, a reproduction of a 19th century house equipped with Oriental and European uh, decor. So this is all on day two, as well as Philippine antiquities in and as well with furniture. Of course, we'll then proceed to Fort Santiago, Manila's main line of defense against inv invaders from the seas. It is a stone fort guarding the entrance to the city from Manila Bay. It has been the site of many tragic moment, moments in Philippine history as well. From Fort Santiago, drive on to Manila's central district, often referred to as the heart of Manila. 
with its market, pilgrimage church of the Black Nazan and jeepney terminals and bazaars. It has it all and you'll be able to pick up a bargain for sure. Then proceed to the Chinese cemetery, the only one of its kind in the world where the, the mausoleums are as big and as elaborate as houses and where the fusion of Eastern and Christian religions are very much in evidence. So just check out this. This is a cemetery. As you can see, as big as houses. And then you'll end the tour with a short sightseeing tour of the bustling financial and commercial district of Makatai City. Now, then on day three, you have a day at leisure in Manila. And we have a number of different options available. Or you may want to take an optional day tour to the falls, one of the many outlying areas, and get outside the big city and get out and see this natural beauty. Day four, fly to Boracay, repeatedly voted one of the top five beaches in the world, only five miles long and 500 yards wide at points. Boracay is famous for white sand, a three mile picture perfect stretch of pure white sand. Everyone is walking and everything is in walking distance for everybody. So you'll arrive at the beach where you can relax for days five and six, where you can take it easy get out and explore, maybe do some snorkeling, maybe do some scuba diving, maybe just relax on the beach, get a massage, go to the local market, you know, even have a drink at the local bar. It all depends on what you want to do, but I can tell you it's at a great price as well. So after two days of relaxing, days five and six, we then get up to day seven, where you'll then have to make your departure. Now, whether or not that's to somewhere else in the Philippines, or whether or not that's somewhere else throughout Asia, or maybe even back to the United States. The team at Asia Answers can ensure that everything goes as smoothly and as seamlessly as possible. And as I mentioned,